All right, guys, so I'm back with another video. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make this occlusion mask from the last video show up, uh, or I should say follow the player character itself. Um, give me a second. My mouse is uh, messing up. So as you can see, it's not based on the camera location, but instead uh, the player location. Bear with me for a second because my right mouse button seems to be uh, going out. So anyway, there's that. This will work on a compiled project. I'm going to go ahead and break down to you guys how I did this. So I'm using a material parameter collection and we have to use a material parameter collection because if we don't, the only other way of doing this is using dynamic materials and uh, material parameter collections are the only way that you can actually alter values on a material function or material in general uh, without making it di a dynamic additive. So that's what material parameter collections are good for in case anyone uh, wondered. I've seen people use them a lot in the past and nobody has ever bothered to explain that to me. So I, I, I just figured that out whenever I was playing around with this idea. Uh, so if you followed along with uh, the project, then yours will look something like this. The camera will be plugged in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do this. So to create a material parameter collection, you right click and go to materials. And then right down here near the bottom is material parameter collection. And I'll just call this one NPC player location. And then I'll open it up and we need a vector. So we're going to create a vector. Now this is a vector four, not a vector three, but that's okay. And then I'll just name it player location. And so if I come back in here and into the material function and I right click and I type in collection, you'll see it pulls up collection parameter. That's this right here. And we've already got that NPC player collection, uh, player location selected, but you can select it from the drop down if it's not. And then under the parameter name, you want that to be the player location one that we just created. And you can see I already did it here, but you're going to break the float four because it is a float four. I don't know. It might throw an error if you don't do that. And then uh, uh, make float three. And we're making it a float three because uh, these world space transforms are going. It's going to assume that it's a, a vector three. This one will be OK, but this one right here needs a vector three. Uh, so. I'm just going to plug that in there. And so we've already set it up. Now there's just one other thing we need to do. And that's, that is on the player character itself. We need to update that position every tick. Uh, some people are really opposed to ticks, but in some cases uh, you might already be using it uh, or you, you might not be able to get, a, get away from using it. In this case, you're not going to be able to get away from using it because it's something that has to be updated at literally every tick. So it's the only way to do it. Uh, so what you're going to do is just to make this simpler. Um, and I'm just going to create, uh, this type in material parameter collection or type in material collection and it should still pull up. And then right here, uh, you're just going to create an object reference. And this is only so that you can access this easily. Otherwise, you're going to have to find it. But if you do right click, uh, you can, it'll be under material, or no, it'll be under rendering and materials. So rendering, materials, and you'll see right here near the bottom. Uh, set vector parameter value, uh, but this just makes it a little bit easier. You can delete it afterwards because uh, you can't select your parameter name from there unless you manually set it from here like this. So, uh, I mean, you could probably get the parameter from here, uh, but, and then have it set this in this, but anyway, 
it's easier just to do it that way. So just type in set vector parameter value. And then as you can see, if I, if I do set this and I compile it, you'll see it, it still don't show up. So that's why I said you can't do it like that. Uh, so we're going to manually set it from here. And now you can see we have our player location. And all you have to do is get actor location. And you're going to make linear color right here at the bottom. And then you're going to split this up and plug it in top to bottom, one to one. And that's pretty much it. After you've done that and you've hooked it up like this, then whenever you come in here, you'll be able to view your character from any angle and or from any distance and it'll still occlude it. And that's it guys. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I thought it was a pretty cool trick and I don't know, I might use it uh, from time to time. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.